Sort of in light of what happened, you know, last night, I mean, even when Trump called for the support, uh, his supporters to go home, he still maintained that, you know, the election was stolen from him. And so what is sort of the likelihood of, for instance, either Mike Pence activating the 25th Amendment to remove him or Congress may be impeaching and removing him, you know, within the next two weeks? Yeah. Again, other than the Civil War, we've never had a situation where, first of all, the president uh, resisted leaving office after losing an election. All mm. American presidents have accepted the principle of you do your darndest, you fight your hardest until the vote is in. And after the vote is in, you stop fighting. Yeah. That's been the rule that made our democracy work. So President Trump's been defying that rule, and he still does. He, he put out a statement last night. He was pressured by his staff. You have to say there'll be an orderly transition. You can't leave it hanging. So he put out this crazy statement that says, even though I won the election and the yeah. facts bear me out, there will be an orderly transition of power on the 20th. But I will never stop fighting, and this may be the end of the first term, but we're going to you know, make America great again. Yeah. So he, he's, he's got like a, a bit in his mouth that he's charging with. Yeah. So that, that is new, and we don't have a good way to deal with that. The 25th Amendment was really made to deal with a president who was incapacitated by injury or illness. It was not made to deal with a president who has kind of gone rogue and refuses to follow the rules of the system. Impeachment was the mechanism for removing a president that had acted contrary to national interests. But impeachment, as we've seen, is a process that can take a couple of weeks. So it's hard to see doing it now. Yeah. Now, you know, if, if it was an emergency, could Congress rush through an impeachment in a couple of days? If it was fairly unanimous, yes. But since we've already seen a hundred congressmen and a dozen senators willing to say, well, maybe there were problems in the election and we have to take these claims seriously, mm. I don't think impeachment would be a, a quickly done deal. Mm. So we're probably stuck for the next couple of weeks with an angry president, yeah. but at least now he has a staff around him who is more aware of the need to kind of restrain what he's doing. And, yeah. and Twitter and Facebook are on alert that they're going to have to uh, take care with what goes out. Yeah. yeah. But Section 4 of the 25th Amendment is actually uh, a section that allow, that enables a president to be removed un involuntarily, right? It does up to a point. The way it works is a majority of the cabinet has to join the vice president in making a declaration that they feel the president is no longer fit to carry on. Hmm. Now, it's not even clear whether that rule applies to acting members of the cabinet who have not been confirmed by the Senate. You could argue that acting cabinet members don't have the authority to act under the 25th Amendment, hmm. but that's reserved to cabinet members who have been confirmed, not people who are temporarily holding that seat. Yeah. Well, because Trump has preferred to have acting uh, secretaries in many seats because he considers them uh, you know, more subject to his personal control, um, we have a number of actings. And then you have a number of uh, cabinet secretaries who are personal friends or very loyal to Trump. Uh, Betsy DeVos, uh, Wilbur, uh, Commerce Secretary. Um, so it, it's not clear you could even get a majority of confirmed cabinet members to do it. Yeah. And if they did it, the president has the right under the 25th Amendment to say, no, I, I'm competent, I can do it. And if he makes that claim, uh, then Congress has to vote by two thirds to remove him. Okay. And wow. even that, as I say, you know, <laughs> may not be an easy done deal. So you know, even though people are talking about these options, let's impeach him tonight. Yeah. Let's invoke the 25th Amendment. He's dangerous. He's out of his mind. He's not accepting reality. He lost. He won't <laughs> accept that he lost. Yeah. What can we do? Well, frankly, if this had started back in November, you know, the, the day that Trump said, um, it's all a fraud, I'm not going to do it. And what, once it became clear that he was committed to this narrative of convincing tens of millions of people to believe that the election was stolen, that's when Congress or the cabinet should have intervened. Yeah. But the exactly. attitude was, well, it's just harmless talk. You know, he, he's an emotional guy. He has an ego. Uh, let him, you know, if, he, if he's comforted by the theory that he really won, uh, let him enjoy that. It won't do any harm. Well, we've seen where that goes. And, and my feeling is simply lies are evil. 
if you cannot stop public officials who are invested with the public trust from lying, you will end up in serious trouble. And, you know, that effort really has not been part of that. The Trump administration has been built on lies from the beginning. That's why we have so many dead from COVID-19, among other problems. Wow. And, uh...